Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an end-to-end -end review of the new KQI 300X electric scooter. Now over the last several months, I have made a variety of videos covering this scooter. Everything from unboxing, assembly, to first impressions, to range tests, hill climb tests up over 1,800 feet in elevation gain, as well as one of my more ambitious videos, a direct comparison of this scooter to two of its top competitors, the Segway 9Bot Max G2 as well as the Apollo Go. And after months of testing, I've got some thoughts, I've got some conclusions. So if you're in the market for an electric commuter scooter that's very portable and has got some power under it, stay tuned because we're going to jump into the details right now. So to start off with some basic stats, the new KQI 300X is a single motor commuter scooter. Now that motor is 500 nominal watts and is capable of cranking out upwards of 1,000 watts of peak power as well as 37 newton meters of torque, which is quite a bit of torque for a scooter of this size and weight. Speaking of weight, this scooter weighs in at 48.7 pounds and comes equipped with a 48 volt, 13 amp hour lithium ion battery that's got about 608 watt hours of capacity. Now according to new that should be good for approximately 40 miles of theoretical range which we'll get into in a moment. Now one of the defining features of this scooter is the fact that it does have a suspension. It's got front hydraulic suspension which is huge because its predecessor the KQI3 Max did not have a suspension and I can tell you right now from experience that having some suspension makes all the difference in the world. Now when it comes to stopping power this scooter is equipped with dual disc brakes which is really nice to see because a lot of commuter scooters out there incorporate drum brakes which are great for maintenance but not so great for stopping power. Disc brakes typically have a heck of a lot more bite and we absolutely see that with this scooter which we'll go into in a moment. In addition to those dual disc brakes it also has regenerative or electronic braking which helps with stopping power as well as recharging your battery when you're coasting or going downhill. Another thing to call out about this scooter is that it comes equipped with 10 and a half inch tubeless pneumatic tires which are bigger than the 8 to 10 inch tires that we typically see with commuter scooters. And finally this scooter comes with a water resistance rating of IP55 which means you should have no issues riding through some shallow puddles as well as some light rain. Just keep in mind that uh, most scooter companies don't cover water damage because they don't know if you rode through some puddles or rode your scooter into a lake. As for price tag, the KQI 300X at the time of filming this video is listed at $849. So now that we've got some of our basic stats out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the details of our testing. All right, so the first category that we're gonna look at today is top speed and acceleration. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I stepped on this scooter, I didn't know what to expect. Was it gonna be our typical commuter scooter or was it gonna be something more? And I'm happy to say it's something a little bit more because this scooter out of the box has got really strong acceleration and has no issues at all getting to its stated top speed of 24 miles an hour. In terms of top speed and acceleration, the KQI 300X is able to go from zero to 20 miles an an hour and right around eight seconds and then zero to 24 miles an hour its top speed in just over 11 seconds. Now the nice thing about this scooter is it is app enabled so if out of the box the acceleration settings are a little too strong for you you can actually go into the app and make adjustments to the acceleration strength as well as a host of other settings. So while we're on the topic of speed and acceleration I will say that during my testing I did get some comments from some folks uh, as well as see some posts in various forums of people talking about the jerkiness of the acceleration on this scooter. And I think I've got a solution for that. Uh, what I have found is that, you know, with the default acceleration settings, as well as the default regenerative brake settings, is as soon as you release the throttle, the regen brake kicks in. And so if you apply throttle and release, you know, you'll accelerate and you'll slow down really quickly, which can give it a jerky feeling. So if you're going to be riding around, let's say on flat ground and you're not too concerned about range or battery capacity, go into the settings in the app and just disable regenerative braking. That way, when you release the throttle, you just coast. Now, keep in mind that even though you have regenerative braking off, uh, when you hit the brake levers, you'll still have electronic braking in addition to those disc brakes activating. Uh, and so by turning off regen brake, you're not losing any kind of electronic braking power. So overall, acceleration is very strong on this scooter. So if you live in a busy city and you know you need to get uh, up to speed really quickly, maybe when the light turns green, 
or you need a little extra power to get yourself out of some hairy situations, the KQI 300X has plenty of acceleration to do just that. So the next category that we're gonna look at today is gonna be range. Now, New does claim that this KQI 300X will get upwards of 40 miles of theoretical range. Now, keep in mind that theoretical range figures are really based on very specific riding conditions. For example, a rider that's 165 pounds riding on flat ground with little or no stop and go on a windless day, uh, 75 degree temperatures, uh, basically treadmill conditions. In the real world, what you get in range may very well be different than what somebody else gets in range. It's all dependent upon you know, your weight as well as the riding conditions in which you're using the scooter. So for my range test, I actually took the KQI 300X out on a course that I take all my commuter scooters out on. Uh, and on this particular course, we were able to get 26.36 miles of real world range. And that's with me weighing in at approximately 203, 200 four pounds with all of my gear. And I'll tell you what, that's a pretty impressive figure. It might not be 40, but it's significantly more than I was able to get on the Segway 9Bot Max G2, the Apollo Go, as well as the In Motion Climber. So 26.36 is a very respectable figure on that course, especially given you know the riding conditions in which I'm riding. So if you're looking for a commuter scooter that's able to do you know over 25 miles of real world range, the KQI 300X definitely fits the bill. Now the next category that we're gonna look at today is hill climbability. Now I do take a lot of the scooters and e-bikes that I test up to Phoenix's South Mountain, which is approximately 17 miles round trip of a gruel hill climb. Now the steepest sections do get upwards of 10% grade, but it's essentially nine, nine and a half miles of almost non-stop hill climb. So it's definitely an endurance test for the scooters that I test. And I'm happy to say that the KQI 300X was actually able to make it to all three lookout points on the mountain. Even in the steepest sections, the KQI 300X definitely excelled. Uh, we did have our speed limited to 20 miles an hour so that we can keep it the same across all the scooters that we test. It also helps eliminate the possibility of overheating because the last thing you want to do is ride nine miles, you know, full throttle, full power, straight up a mountain. It's just begging for overheating issues. So uh, with these commuter scooters that go, you know, 22 to 24 miles an hour, I typically cap the speed at 20. Now we did run into what I thought was originally a throttle error. It was actually an overheating rear motor. Uh, but after about a minute or two, I powered up the scooter, powered it back on, and we were good to go. And we made it to the top. Now, one thing that I think is really impressive about this scooter is that when we completed that 17 mile round trip, I was expecting to have somewhere under 10% battery remaining because that was the case with the Ninebot Max G2 as well as the Apollo Go. But to my surprise, uh, the KQI 300X actually had 25% battery remaining, which was super impressive. So if you live in a place with lots of light to moderate hills, the KQI 300X is definitely well positioned to tackle those. The next category that we're gonna look at today is gonna be suspension. And that's actually one of the defining features of the KQI 300X is the fact that it has a front dual hydraulic suspension, which does a very good job of absorbing impacts. Now there are scooters out there that have no suspension and there are scooters out there that have full suspension. The KQI 300X is right in the middle with half a suspension and they opted to put it up front, which I think was a fabulous idea because having dampening in the front is important to maintaining control of your scooter. Uh, you know, scooters that don't have a suspension, when you're going over particularly rough terrain, those handlebars can get very bouncy and, you know, possibly slip out of your hands. So having some dampening up front eliminates or significantly reduces that possibility. Now, one thing to call out about that suspension is it does give you 1.77 inches of travel, uh, which is quite a bit. And as you can see from this slow motion video, that front suspension definitely puts in the work in terms of dampening impacts as you go over them. Now, unfortunately, the scooter doesn't have a suspension in the rear, so you can definitely feel some of that impact. But the nice thing is, is that this scooter does have those 10 and a half inch air filled tires. So those do help absorb some of that impact. And you can definitely see that on the slow-mo video. So with all that being said, the KQI 300X is definitely well suited to ride both on the beaten path as well as off the beaten path 
on some hard packed dirt. Having that front suspension makes all the difference in the world. The next category that we're gonna look at today is gonna be brakes. Now this scooter does come equipped with dual disc brakes, one up front, one in the rear. And as I mentioned before, you know, a lot of commuter scooters uh, typically opt for drum brakes, which are great for reducing maintenance, but they don't have the stopping power or the bite of proper disc brakes. And so very happy that new equipped this the way they did. Now, in addition to those disc brakes, you also have regenerative and electronic braking. Uh, with regenerative braking, the second you release the throttle, it actually starts braking gradually to help you, you know, retrieve some of that uh, energy and put it back into your battery. Uh, you've also got electronic braking. Uh, so let's say you completely disable regen brakes uh, and then, you know, you're coasting along and you pull the brake handle. Not only will the discs engage, but it'll also engage the electronic brakes and the rear motor. So if brakes are an important feature for you, the KQI 300X has no issues there. It's got lots and lots of stopping power, especially for emergency braking situations, as well as braking when going down steep inclines. Now, if comfort and handling are at the top of your list for your next scooter, the KQI 300X definitely delivers. Now, one of the places where I do gauge scooter handling is on the downside of that uh, hill climb test, where you know I'm going upwards of 24, 25, on some devices 30 plus miles an hour into really tight mountain curves and the KQI 300X handled those curves like a pro. Didn't have any kind of wobble or anything like that. Felt very dialed in. The next category that we're gonna look at today is gonna to be the controls on the scooter. And this is an area that's especially important for me. Uh, you know, SNU does a very good job of putting the turn signals, the handle brakes, the, the bell, uh, the throttle in very easy to access areas so you don't have to lift your hand. But if you wanna turn on the headlights or switch driving modes, unfortunately you have to lift your hand off that handlebar to hit that button that's you know mounted at the bottom of the display. It would be really nice in future iterations of this scooter uh, for new to leverage the extra space they have at the top and bottom of that turn signal keypad uh, to put a headlight button or a mode selector button. Now, if you're gonna be riding your scooter around at night, lighting is gonna be very important. And I'm happy to say that the lighting setup on the KQI 300X is actually quite good. Uh, they do have that uh, signature uh, halo headlight up front that new puts on pretty much all of their products. And that does a really good job of, you know, providing a lot of forward visibility. What it doesn't do though is provide very much lighting to the sides of you. And so as I recommend with most scooters out there, get yourself a handlebar mounted light to provide some extra lighting to the sides, especially if you're gonna be riding in very dark conditions at higher speeds. Now this scooter also has some turn signals that are visible from the front and back. Those are very bright, very easy to see both day and night. Uh, and the same is true with the brake and tail light combo in back. It's big, it's bright, shouldn't have any issues with night or daytime visibility there. Now in terms of portability, the KQI 300X is of course a folding electric scooter. So if you need to throw it in the trunk of your car, throw it in your back seat, or maybe store it in a place that you know you don't have a lot of space, simply unlatch the stem, fold it down, lock it into place, and you're good to go. And as I mentioned before, this scooter weighs in at approximately 48.7 pounds, which makes it lighter than both the Apollo Go and the Segway 9 Bot Max G2. And weight is key, especially if you're gonna be climbing up and down flights of stairs, which you can absolutely do with this scooter. And finally, the last category that we're gonna look at today is gonna be the app. Now I do have a love-hate relationship with this app. On the one side, it allows you to go in there and adjust you know, a lot of the settings. You know, For example, uh, the strength of the acceleration, the strength of the regenerative braking, gives you the ability to toggle on uh, cruise control or you know, toggle on or off kick to start and a variety of features that you can go into you know, enable and disable. And it does a phenomenal job. It's super intuitive. Probably one of the best experiences I've seen. Now, on the other side of the app, you have your ride tracking. And when you, you know, track your rides, you've got a dashboard, you know, mount the phone on your uh, handlebars and you can see, uh, you know, the speed that you're going with the battery remaining. You can see a real time map of where you're riding around. Uh, there's supposedly some stats for, you know, your average speed, your incline, all of that fun stuff. But what I have found is that it doesn't actually track uh, the mileage that you're making on that ride, at least it doesn't for me. And on top of that, I found that 
it, when it does log the rides, it usually takes like 24 hours for those to show up or powering on and off the scooter multiple times for those to show up, if they show up at all. Uh, and when they do show up, uh, you can't actually look at the path that you took on the map. It actually gives you a little message at the top that says that the route wasn't logged. And then there's a, you know, another sentence there, but it's actually cut off. So you never really know how to enable that. Now, I do know that uh, New uses this app for a variety of devices, scooters, bikes, so on and so forth. So maybe that's not a feature, but it makes it look like it is. And it's definitely not logging things. Now, to be fair, I did reach out to support. I told them about my problem and they came back and they said, hey, you know, make sure it's connected to Bluetooth. It is. Make sure location service is on. They are, they are definitely on. Uh, make sure that the phone is, you know, turned on and the app connected through the, you know, entirety of the ride, which it absolutely is. And they said if those things don't work, then it could be the GPS chip on my phone, which I find very hard to believe because it works beautifully with both the Apollo Go and the Segway 9 by Max G2, as well as some other scooters that I've tested in the past. So my phone is fine. There's a problem with the app. So no, if you're listening, you've got issues with uh, <laughs> ride logging. Uh, and I found, you know, on the support side, I found on different forums on Reddit that other people are having similar issues. If you could fix that, you're going to have one heck of an app. So right now, half of it, I love it. The other half definitely needs improvement. So now that we've gone over all of the stats and how well this scooter performed in each of those categories, what are my thoughts of the KQI 300X? Well, first I'm gonna go over the things that I love and then I'm gonna go over the things that I think could use some improvement. Number one on my list of the things that I love is gonna be the speed and acceleration. It definitely caught me off guard when I first hopped on this scooter and I'm definitely glad that they put a functional kick plate in the rear because when you put it into wild acceleration mode uh, and you hit that throttle, you can definitely feel that scooter pull you. So having that kick plate in place is huge. The second thing that I love about this scooter are gonna be the turn signals. Not only are they bright, but there's actually a ridge on the part where the turn signals start so that you know, you know with your grip that you're not covering them with your hands. And that's an issue that I had with the 9Bot Max G2 is a lot of times I'd be riding around with a wide grip without really realizing that I'm actually covering the turn signals. So kudos to New for implementing that. And finally, the third thing that I love about this scooter is gonna be the front hydraulic suspension. As I mentioned before, it does a very good job of absorbing impact and it's very responsive. Perfect for a rider like me that weighs in at around 203, 204 pounds with gear. Now moving over to the things that I think could use some improvement. Number one on that list is gonna be the app. Uh, you know, like I said before, half the app I love, the data logging, ride logging part of the app I think could use some major improvement. So if they can figure that out, that app is gonna be fantastic. Number two on my list is gonna be the controls. That uh, turn signal, you know, control pad, it looks like there's some room at the top and the bottom. If you can get a headlight and a mode selector button on there, it's gonna be absolutely perfect. That way riders don't have to lift their hands off the handlebars to switch driving modes or to turn the headlights on and off. And finally, number three on my list of things that I think could use some improvement is gonna be the little hook for the latching mechanism uh, that's located at the bottom of the display. Uh, the latching mechanism itself is fantastic. It's just that little loop, it kind of protrudes. So if you're in wild acceleration mode uh, and you're doing a lot of stop and go kind of activities, uh, that thing could bump into your stomach a little bit, your chest a little bit. Uh, and so it would be nice if there was like a flip out uh, loop that you can use to latch it into the deck. So maybe in future iterations, but uh, definitely not a deal breaker for me. All right, so after going over all of that, what are my thoughts on the KQI 300X? Well, overall, I think it's a very strong competitor in the commuter scooter segment. It's got an absolutely fabulous design. It's got strong speed and acceleration. It's got very good range as well as hill climbability. So if you're looking for a commuter scooter that can pretty much do it all, the KQI 300X absolutely fits the bill. So let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns. Happy to address those. And if you do find yourself wanting to purchase this scooter, I will include some links in the description. And if you purchase a scooter with those links, it absolutely helps support this channel and helps keep the wheels moving on future reviews. So thank you in advance. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.